welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla. I live in Louisiana and I am so grateful that you stopped by for a visit today. So why don't you grab yourself a drink, maybe a snack, and a project to work on and let's visit. <laughs> I am so happy that you're all here with me tonight while I am recording this video for Sunday's video. So you can see I have a visitor here. She is um think she's the queen of the desk. Yes, you do, don't you, Sassy? So she jumped up here right when I started to record, and it scared me. <laughs> so I had to stop and like come back and record again. But that's Sassy. And yes, she thinks she is my second boss. Phoebe is my first boss, and Sassy's my second boss. <laughs> and Big Daddy's probably thinking, I'm way down the line. <laughs> He's probably thinking Sissy even comes bosses me around more than him. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you're all having a great Sunday. That's when this video will come out. I'm recording it, you know, really late Saturday night. So that it will be ready for Sunday morning. But I hope you're having a great Sunday and enjoying your day. Doing whatever it is that you enjoy doing. And today I am drinking some coffee from the assorted box that Lisa had sent me. And I am drinking, it's called black and white chocolate and vanilla flavoring. Black and white cookie. I think it's called black and white cookie. It does taste really good. I mean, so far, every one I've had tasted really well. I'm very much enjoying that, sampling those different flavors. In the morning time, I drink my regular coffee, which is a um, caramel cappuccino. It's just a great value Walmart brand. I think it comes like 12 in the box for about four bucks, something like that. I drink that in the morning time, and then at night when I'm recording my videos, I'm sampling, you know, the, the K-Cups from Lisa. They're so good. So, I have been working on this blanket. I worked on it a little bit this afternoon while I tried to watch Will Trent. Um, season 2 of that has came out on Hulu. So, I was, and there's three episodes out, and I had not watched any of them. So, I was trying to catch up on Will Trent. But I tell you what, I watched the first episode twice because I wasn't paying attention the first time. And then I was like, wait, wait, what happened? <laughs> and so I just started it over and rewatched it and tried to pay more attention. I watched the second episode and I didn't pay much attention at all. And it's about halfway through the third episode and I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening on there. So if I want to know what's happened, I'm going to have to go back and watch episode two and three again i've just been distracted you ever be like that where you can't really focus on anything you're just distracted and your mind's running loops and you know you're racing around everywhere and you can't concentrate yeah that's me right now <laughs> but i did crochet on my duck baby blanket so if you're you know just tuning in you're like where's the duck this is a duck. It's a mallard duck baby blanket that I am making for Big Daddy's co-worker's grandbaby. And someone did ask me what is the camouflage I'm using. It is Red Heart um, Camouflage. I don't know how well you can see that, but it j just says camouflage. or cam So, that's what I'm using for that. the rest of the blanket. I'm just going to try to throw this over here. Sorry about my arm all up in your face throw that over there a little bit so um because i did have it laying here but somebody else decided they should be there and not my yarn that i'm working with and while i was watching will trent i was going to try to do this row i did i'm not sure let me make sure my corner is correct i did um crochet a good bit i know i got all the way down this side and i was going to come around but um, I just hadn't made it there. I've, I've stopped and done so many things. Like, I've been up and down here. But, anyway. So, in Saturday's video, I'm just going to go ahead and start crocheting. Because I got, you know, get my inches in. <laughs> yeah. 
In Saturday's video, I told y'all that I, you know, my plans for today was to be lazy. I lived up to that. All right. <laughs> I lived up to it. I didn't exaggerate that one bit. I was lazy as could be today. I was just exhausted and I knew I needed to just take a day of rest. And so that's what I did. I I woke up several times and would use the restroom and get right back in the bed. And I stayed in the bed till like 4, 4 p.m. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but I didn't get in the bed until about 4 a.m. So y'all don't tell anybody. I only want the 23,000 of y'all to know and nobody else. <laughs> you need to keep your paws up there, little girly. No. <laughs> so anyway, yes, I had a lazy day. At one point, I heard Big Daddy, he was in the den watching TV, and I heard him get up shuffling around. I said, hey, hey, um, can you get me some tea? And so he brought me um, some tea in my mug. And so I, I would wake up and just drink a little tea, use the restroom go back to sleep and that's what I did like all day I guess she's trying to get comfortable uh, at some at some point when I was crocheting this afternoon she came and just wanted me just to hold her she just wanted to lay up on me here in my uh, chair she just wanted to lay up on my chest and me hold her and hug her so that's what we did for a little while and of course Phoebe gets jealous and has to jump down and run over here and say, uh, what about me? <laughs> so I had to tell her, you know, I'm holding sissy, sassy right now. But anyway. And at night, at night, if I would get in the bed, if I say anything to sassy, if Phoebe's like down below our knees or whatever, you know, around our knees between us, between me and Big Daddy. If I say, if I even say Sassy's name, Phoebe is up there and in the spot that Sassy would be in so that Sassy can't get up there. I mean, they are so jealous of each other. It's crazy. So I hope you have a drink that you're enjoying. Some coffee, tea, or just water or whatever. Soda. Whatever it is you're enjoying. And I hope you have a project to work on. While we chat, and I'm going to answer some questions from the previous video. So if you um, have a question you'd like for me to answer in a video, just drop it below in the comment section below this video. Because each night when I start to record, I go through those comments and write down any questions. Or I jot down some keywords, <laughs> and then I um, come back, you know, and video and then I'm you know answering those questions and I wish I could just like talk about every comment but the video would be like a really really you know long and they're usually have been being about anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to just a little bit over an hour and I just don't know that anybody would watch if it was two or three hours although this lady this lady that me and Dakota both have watched she did a five-hour live, and Dakota said that he just, the curiosity got the best of him. <laughs> he had to go see, what what is he doing for five hours? <laughs> so, anyway, um, Dakota had called me this afternoon when he got off work and got home. He called me, and we talked about some stuff, um... What, oh, he wanted he wanted some recipes um, of things that we used to have when he was you know younger, a kid, and lived at home. So um, I got my recipe box out that was covered in dust because it has not been down in a long, long time. <laughs> it is on a shelf up here. It's a um, metal box with flowers on it, a purple lid. And it's, it's my recipe cards that I wrote down on index cards all these years. Now, I'm a shorthand writer. And so, um, I don't write complete directions down. I just shorthand it. 
And so here we are all these years later, and he's I'm reading these in reading these recipe cards to him, and he's like, "Well, what does that mean?" I'm like, "I don't know. Just make it up. <laughs> Do whatever you think is best." But yeah, I, wrote, I didn't even write down like half the time. I didn't even write down how much of something. I would just write cool wheel. And so he's like, well, how much cool wheel? I'm like, I don't know. A whole tub. Just put a whole tub. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm a shorthand writer on everything I do. So even my recipes are written in shorthand. Um, everything that when I write down notes in my notebook and such it's all shorthand. Now, I don't know how to write shorthand. I mean, I just write keywords that are supposed to remind me, but they don't always remind me. But anyway, I went through my recipe cards and um, he, you know, picked out some that he wants to make on his channel. Things that, you know, he remember as being a kid and I would fix or whatever, or he would fix, or Elijah would fix, or somebody would fix. Both my kids cooked and can cook very well. But anyway, we talked about um, car those recipe cards, and I read some of the ingredients and recipes off to him, the ones that he was interested in. And, um, and then we talked about YouTube, and we talked about YouTube Shorts. He has been encouraging me to do YouTube Shorts. And so I've been trying to put a few out for YouTube Shorts and for Instagram Reels. And he's saying, you know, some people only watch Shorts. And some people, you know, only watch YouTube videos. So it's not going to hurt to put out a short on a video that you've already done. Because chances are people who watch that video are not watching the Shorts. And people who watch the shorts aren't watching your videos anyway. So, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I think he's asking a lot of me. I'm barely, I'm barely doing this, okay? <laughs> but, um, I'm going to try to do some shorts. But I really don't know how much shorts really help a channel. Um... I just really don't know. I don't understand a lot about the shorts and reels. And so, back in the day, let me just tell you this, if you don't know. Because <laughs> I, I don't know, and I'm trying to learn this, okay? Um, let's see, a phone. Okay, so this is my phone case. But say you have a phone. Back in the day, you know, I was taking pictures like this, and then my kids were like, no, turn your phone landscape. You have to turn it landscape to get the picture. Okay, so, and this was for, like, Facebook, and even when I started doing YouTube and stuff, you know, so I learned to do my phone landscape. Well, now, for TikTok reels, Instagram reels, or even shorts, you're supposed to turn your phone like this. And so, I'm just having trouble um, remembering to do that. Or actually, if, I, if I'm if i doing it from a clip that's a video that was filmed like this, and shorts or Instagram is going to turn that video like this, and it looks all weird, and it doesn't come out right. It has some black above the top and the bottom. So, they finally trained me to do it this way. And now they're trying to train me to do it this way for some things and this way for some things. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. But that's what the back of my phone looks like. It's a little mushroom. I love mushroom stuff. And when I went in Joanne's um, yesterday, while we were in Shreveport, yeah, or Friday, while we were in Shreveport, um, they had some of the cutest, cutest mushroom stuff and I enjoyed looking at that I didn't get any of it um, but it was all on sale I think like 40% off but they had some really cute mushroom stuff there so if you're into mushrooms you might want to check Joann's but I just love that I, I, I'm into everything okay I think everything is cute and adorable and Sassy is up on my shelf behind my computer screens 
and that makes me nervous. <laughs> Sassy, could you get down? Come on, Sassy. Come on, let's go. Let's go, Sassy. Come on. She's peeking up under the screen, looking at me like, well, where are we going? Come on, Sassy. Come on. I know it's dusty back there. It's got to be. Maybe she's dusting for me. I don't know. So anyway, if you are a content creator and you understand shorts, you, um, what's the benefit of them other than Dakota said, well, it could bring more people to your channel. I'm like, okay, well, how many more do I want? <laughs> he said, just do it. So I have been, he, he told me this like a few days ago. We talked about that. And so I've been trying to do a, some YouTube shorts here and there. Basically, I'm just going through my phone and finding old videos and turning them into YouTube shorts. And the same thing for Instagram. So I think I just will be taking um, shorts from video clips or something and making. So it's not. I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to try, but yet I want to know, is it really worth doing? Like, that takes a little extra time to take a clip or take a video and clip it. It can only be one minute. Trying to get that down to one minute and figuring out, does it need music? Do you need to talk? What, what needs to happen? So that's a little bit, um, that's a little bit of work there. <laughs> And if it's not necessary, I don't really want to do it. I have other things I want to do. Like, I'm doing good just to get my YouTube videos out, okay? But anyway, he's insisting that I do this. And if it wasn't for my kids, I wouldn't even have a YouTube, video, YouTube channel because they're the ones that insisted and made me do this to begin with. Dakota made this YouTube channel back when he was a kid wanting me to do homeschool stuff and he did make me and recorded he made me sit down and he recorded a couple of homeschool lap lap book videos but I was just like I don't want to do this like no I don't want to do this and so I did not do anything with it until many years later when we um decided that I was doing a yarn YouTube channel. <laughs> and I'm so glad that they did force me to do this. Um, because I love it. I love it now. I love you guys. I just love being here with you all. And um, I just, uh, the encouragement that you all give me is beyond what you can even imagine. And so, yes, I'm very thankful that I have a YouTube now. So anyway, um, my, my blanket's slipping. Sassy's now in front of the computer screen above me, looking down, watching me. And I figure she's going to jump down here in a minute, but i got to get this blanket back up on the table before I lose it. All right, so anyway, um, oh, somebody was asking me about clips from yesterday's video. Sassy, no. They were asking me what that big white dog is. It's an RCA dog. I know that. And so, it has Art. The dog's name is Art on his on the dog collar tag. It does say Art. And um, I think that's an art place. Like, a, uh, I don't know if it's an art museum. But it's a place, some kind of art center. So, I may have to inquire more about that or go by when they're open and see um, if I can figure out more about it. But anyway, that's what that is. And, and at night, all those spots on those dogs light up. They're like there's lights inside it and they light up different colors. So, that was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I guess Sassy's um, found her comfortable spot now. Um, so I was in Shreveport Friday for my see my pain pump doctor, and what he does is raise the um, dosage in my pump. He puts a little 
meter thing on my stomach and it reads the pump and my information comes up on his tablet and he's able to make adjustments and all that kind of stuff. So I had a few questions about the pain pump and all that. So they're not all wrote down together. So I'm going to try to see if I can spot them and answer them all right now. But I don't know. If, um, it may come back up in a minute. <laughs> um, somebody asked when I had my pain pump surgery, did I get sick from that? The first few days, I did really well, and then I got a spinal headache. I had a little bit of a headache, and it was just getting worse, but I was up doing, going. I was not still. I was doing way too much for somebody who had just had surgery like that. And so, I guess what I was doing was pushing more and more spinal fluid out. As I was running around the house and town and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I did get really, really sick with spinal headaches. To the point where I could not lift my head up off the bed without throwing up. So, the doctor said that I could come back in for a blood patch. Which was would be all the way over in Shreveport. And then all the way back home. I don't know if it would include a, a night stay or anything. Or I could just try to ride it out because it eventually will close itself and that's the route I chose because I just did not want to ride back to Shreveport and throw you know throwing up like that and so he gave me some pain medicine for the headache and told me to drink lots and lots of caffeine as much caffeine as I could drink so Big Daddy went and got me some Mountain Dew and I was drinking that like crazy, laying in the bed. If I got up, I got so sick. But anyway, it finally did subside. Um, it took about two weeks that I was really, really sick there. And it finally did get better and subside. So, yeah, it will close up on its own. But it's a good idea not to be like, you know, going to town and doing all the stuff that a person who just had spinal surgery <laughs> and like a big cesarean scar across their stomach. I mean, it was on, it's on the side, right up under my uh, right breast. So, it, it's about a four inch cut there. And I was just doing all the, all the things that I should not have been doing. But nobody told me to stay in the bed or anything like that. So, anyway. Anyway, so, other than the spinal headache, that that's what I was sick from. Um, pain pump. I see pain pump written right down here. Somebody was asking about how many more increases I will have to have. Well, we don't know. Um, they increase every two weeks. And we'll just continue to do that until I start feeling somewhat better um or some relief or i feel like it's helping me um he said it could take about you know three months or so to get to that level i've heard some people say eight months to a year i've heard some people i mean i've heard so many different things so i don't know but he did tell me that I'll have about two more increases before I'll have um, a pump refill. So. Well, this little booger don't want to go through. <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, I can't spot any more questions about that. But it seems like it was another question. But we'll just go back up to the top of my list. Donna, I don't know where Donna lives, but she said they are having ice and about two to five inches of snow. Oh, bless you. I hope you're staying warm. I don't know where Donna lives, but um, here in the south, someone asked about what kind of temperatures we were having. We're having like upper 70s. All this next week is going to be like up in the 70s. And so we've had... A week ago, we had temps in the 80s, 70s, and so it has been really nice here. 
Tonight it's kind of chilly. Um, it's about 46 right now. And it is chilly. Phoebe had went outside to potty. And when she came back in, she jumped up in her puppy bed. And put her feet up on the side. And looked at her here. Turned her head back to me. And was barked for me to come turn her heater on. <laughs> See, she just bosses me around. Um, so, she likes the heater on when all the time anyway. She likes her heater. And she knows just to bark and look at me and look at that heater and I'll come turn it on for her. Ugh. All right, I'm going to turn this. Now I'm going to home stretch to meet this. Oh, and last night when I was recording and crocheting on this, I was goofing up for some reason, probably because I was running my mouth and not paying attention. And I did a corner and then was doing another corner. And several of you said that y'all were hollering at me like, check your blanket, you got too many corners. <laughs> oh, thankfully, I did see that because it was... It would have been a mess if I had went around and got back around to that. I would have had to pull the whole thing out. The whole round. But I most definitely would have pulled that out. Because that would have been so, so wrong. So messed up. Um, and I did start this blanket off with a 6 millimeter hook. And my tension is not the same now because it's much looser. And this yarn is just splitting like crazy. So I had tried this hook, which is a 5.5 Susan Bates. And this is a boy style hook. And the head of the Susan Bates seemed to be working better for me with this yarn. At the time, you know, right now, I'm not saying that that's what I'll have to use all the time. I'm just saying, for this blanket, this project right now, right here, this hook is working better for me. <laughs> so, um, I decided after, you know, some comments and um, Audrey's suggestion, I decided to go ahead and work on this blanket with this 5.5. Because, um, it approach it approaches. It's all going to all match up, you know. The um, tension that I had been doing to the tension now, it'll all be fine. So, I'm using the um, a Susan Bates. And just because it's grabbing my yarn and pulling it better through here. And I found that throughout, you know, my crocheting career. <laughs> that sometimes you just have to get a different hook to work with different yarns. Especially if the yarn is kind of splitty, um, a Susan Bates hook will work better with that. It'll, your yarn will stay on the hook better, and it just won't be quite as splitty. So if I were to use, I'll tell you a yarn that's real splitty for me, and that's Karen Simply Soft. I just can't use that because it's too aggravating, it's too splitty. So, if I do use that, I have to use something like a Susan Bates. I have to try different yarn, um, hooks to see what is um, working the best with that yarn. So, if you have a yarn you're struggling with and it's not it's just not working out right, you're getting aggravated with it, try changing hooks. Sometimes it's the hook and, you know, not so much the yarn, but a different hook will allow you to be able to use that yarn. So, um, Lori asked about, she saw that sign when we were in Shreveport on the clips about you need a biscuit. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know if that's a cracker or a cookie or what. I meant to look it up, but I just didn't have time. Didn't think about, remember, I didn't remember to look it up. And I didn't have time to just do that. Since I was, you know, asleep in the bed all day. But, um, I don't know. But I've seen that before. And I just, I laugh every time I see that. And so I wanted to make sure I did get that on video. You need a cookie. Um, oh, you need a biscuit. Yeah, I don't know if that's 
I don't know what that is. But I, I laugh every time I see that. Oh, Laura, Laura, my dear friend Laura. Um, Laura said that she has been housebound for about 10 years. And some of that time she was in the bed and couldn't get out of the bed. But she's um, able to get out of the bed now, from what I understood. But she's still homebound for like 10 years now. And so I'm so sorry, Laura. But I'm so thankful that you have YouTube and that we have connected. And that um, you're able to, you know, connect with people through the internet and YouTube and such. So that's awesome. But I do want to ask you and anyone else who are also homebound. Um, what are some types of places you would like to see on video? Like, um, what are some places me and Big Daddy could go and film some clips and make a video of that you would be interested in seeing? Like, that you, you know, like, that's the only way you're going to see them, obviously, if you're homebound. So tell me some places in the comments that you would like to see on video. And that's for anyone, not just Laura, but especially anyone who is homebound. Yeah, what places? Now, I'm in Louisiana. I travel from here to Shreveport every twice, twice a month. So anywhere between my town and there. So just ask me what... Just tell me what kind of places you would like to see video of. And I will try to do that because I am, you know, I just want to be able to provide you with something interesting that would interest you and to take you somewhere. So, let's do it. You can, you can jump in my car from your house and we will go on a field trip. Me and Big Daddy had tried doing that here, I guess this past spring and summer, until, up until it got really hot, and we had to cut that out. <laughs> but we were trying to go some interesting places to take um, the ones that were, you know, at home and weren't getting out. And so we we did several places then, but um, I'm always up to doing things like that if as long as I can physically do it and Big Daddy can physically do it, but just let me know in the comments. Uh, Mary needs a prayer for her neck. I'm not sure exactly what her prop issues are with her neck, but she asked to be a prayer. And Susan, I added you, I wrote you down and added you to my prayer list also. Susan had an ulcer on her foot that went to the bone and she just had surgery. So, I did add you, Susan, to my prayer list also. And so, I'm so sorry. That just sounds so painful. My heart goes out to you, and I hope that you heal quickly. And Mary, I hope your neck issues are sorted out, and there is some help for you. Thank you all for letting me know how I can pray for you. I know many of you have prayed for me, and I would, I'm more than happy to return the favor, my friends. And Judy asked me about a koala bear amigurumi. Judy, I just did not have time to look. I have done a koala bear in the past. If you go to my YouTube channel, go to my homepage of it, like click on my name, Lama Mama Kayla, and it should bring up my youtube channel and then on my that home page look down a little bit and there's going to be a magnifying glass somewhere if you click on that magnifying glass and put in crochet koala bear one that i have done will come up and i will show you the book that i used and i have a koala blanket and a koala bear on there so yeah, I'll check my channel out and see. And usually when I do a video, I title it what that video is about. And it has all the details and stuff like that of that project. So, and I did that for, you know, 
purposes for people to be able to find certain projects and also for myself it's easier for me to find projects that I need to go back and see but I just did not have time to look that look that up but it's there and Janice says that she lives in Shreveport and she knew exactly where we were so Janice I come to Shreveport twice a month every other week if you want to get together and hang out you know I'd love to meet you maybe we could meet at a yarn store and visit for a moment so let me know and anyone else who lives in Shreveport also let me know we can work something out um, as long as you know my health and Big Daddy's health is open for us to do something like that oh let's see um but some, someone asked, does Patina wear Barbie clothes? For the most part, she does. Um, she's a thicker than Barbie. She doesn't have the boobs like Barbie. But she, um, and she has wider hips than Barbie. But she has a teeny tiny waist like Barbie. <laughs> and she has shorter legs than Barbie does. So she can wear Barbie tops, dresses, skirts, shorts. Um... Unless they are for a super skinny, tiny Barbie. But, um, pants is the only thing. And sometimes I have to cut pants off and just make them work. And it works fine. Sometimes pants work fine on their own. It just depends on how it's made and such. But, um, yeah, she, she can wear a lot of Barbie clothes. Let me see. Um, Hope. Yes, I went to that crochet group um, back, it must have been like October, right? That I went to that. And I enjoyed that so much. I really would love to go and do that every month. But right after that is when Big Daddy's truck broke down. And so he has my car now. And I don't have a way to go. So I'm not getting to go to that. But I I, I would love to go to that. And so we are going to have to get him a vehicle. That is like top priority that we have to do. Because like next week, we have three doctor's appointments. He has one and I have two. Well, he can't take off work three days. Right? And he works an hour away. So it's not like... You just take off work and run to this doctor's appointment and come right back to work. It's an hour to town. <laughs> Go to your doctor's appointment and then it would be an hour back to work. And he has done that at times. If, you know, the if the times work out and the hours work out correctly. But, yeah. So he is going to have to get a vehicle no matter what it is. Something that's not a gasaholic. Because the truck he had was a total gasaholic. And we do not need any gasaholics in our family. <laughs> and then I would be able to go back to the crochet group. And I, I would love that. And I just feel so bad that I went. I had such a good time. And then I never showed back up. And I hope the sweet ladies there doesn't think, well, she must have not liked us or something like that. Because I totally did. And somebody was asking, can I drive? I can drive. Blind as a bat, but I can drive. <laughs> I tell my friend Angela, like when she says something about not able to be able to see something, I say, I just close my eyes and hope for the best. <laughs> I mean, at night when lights are shining in your eyes, it is kind of hard to see. I tell her, I just close my eyes and hope for the best. But I can drive. I, I can. Um... I use, let me just get this little cluster done real quick because I was close to getting it done. And I hate to stop in the middle of a cluster or I just want to know that I completed it before I stop. But I use this hand to shift, you know, 
And sometimes I do have to use, this is pre-surgery. I haven't driven since the surgery, but I can totally do that. It's nothing stopping me. It's just I hadn't had the opportunity. But um, I use this hand to shift. And at times, um, because I need to grip around that thing and pull, I have to use this thumb to push in the button to be able to shift. So I have to use two hands to do that. And then, um, you know, I can put my hands on the steering wheel and swerve <laughs> through traffic. But, um, yeah, I'm good to drive. I'm legal. Um, and somebody asked me, was crocheting pulling on the stretches? No, not really. That's not what pulls on my stretch stitches here. Um, when I'm doing stuff around the house and I grab stuff and I go to pick something up because I'm forgetful. And then I'm like, oh, because I do... I do hurt it sometimes doing stuff like that. And then sometimes I'm brushing it against something or bumping it on something. And just electricity just goes through that hand. And, I mean, that happens like, you know, just only a hundred times a day. <laughs> but, I mean, I gotta, I gotta do stuff. I gotta do what I need to do and, you know, go about my daily stuff and do what I need to do throughout my house. But, um, yeah, that that's when I'm... Put, feel the stitches pulling but just holding this I don't it's not hurting it it's when I'm doing other things like you know getting a gallon of milk out of the fridge or um something like that yeah I go to pick up something with this hand like this and then I feel it especially if it has some weight to it but I'll either learn or it'll heal up and be better. <laughs> I doubt I'll learn because I'm a, I'm a, um, hard headed, you can put it that way. Yep, hard headed is what you could call me. Um, and then somebody was asking about Sissy and Sassy. Have they tried to mess with my hand? At different times, they both have sniffed it, and Phoebe also. But, um, they hadn't really done anything that could, you know, really hurt it or anything. But they were curious. Sassy, um, sometimes wants to smell it. Like, she's asleep right now. <laughs> but she wants to smell it sometimes. And Sissy also. I don't know. Beverly, dear Beverly. As much as I hate oatmeal, I do have to eat it sometimes. <laughs> Beverly was saying that she was, had ate some oatmeal. And she cut up a banana to go in it to, you know, probably try to make it better. I'm just not an oatmeal person, but I do have to eat it. I can't eat a banana because that's not going to go down. I just can't get it mushed up enough to go down. Um, I can eat banana pudding. But I do eat oatmeal um, sometimes just... Because I need something in my stomach that's going to, um, like, be there for a little bit. But I'll tell you what I can eat. I can eat ice cream. Now, everything I eat is, like, sweets are either high in sodium. Okay? There's nothing in between, really. <laughs> <clears throat> I can eat ice cream, pudding. I can eat grits and oatmeal, mashed potatoes, the carrot souffle from Piccadilly, and let's see, soups like chicken broth, which hot water is not a meal to me. I'm sorry. I don't care. I don't care what Big Daddy says. Hot water is not a meal. <laughs> I'll tell my friend Angela, she'll say something. She'll be like, I'm eating a, just fix me a steak and a baked potato. And I'm like, well, I'm just eating hot water. Ooh, this hot water is good. <laughs> That's what I always tell her. This hot water is so yummy. I bet you're jealous. <laughs> I'll have chicken broth or cream of chicken or cream of potato. 
and we do blend that potato up um, but yeah so all those are like high in sodium but everything that I eat is either like you know sweets or high in sodium so there we go Some cookies I can eat if they just melt in your mouth, just melt away, and there's not like, you're not swallowing like lumps of something. And some crackers are like that, but then some are not. Uh, it just depends on, you know, if it's, if it's a chunk of something, it's not going to go down my esophagus. Because my esophagus does not work to push food down. So, yeah, I just eat basically stuff that that you don't even have to chew. That's just like um, smooth, no lumps of anything. And sometimes like some fish, um, if it's broke up and, and if it just crumbles up in little pieces, I can get that down sometimes and sometimes not. And sometimes I can't get mashed potatoes or ice cream down it just depends on what my esophagus decides to do that day like I never know until I try to eat and then I'm like oop that ain't working so but I'm not a quitter I keep trying <laughs> I keep trying because I'm hungry um and then someone was asking me about, we went to the Chinese restaurant and all I got was pudding because that's all they had I could eat. And she was like, what about the egg drop soup? Well, I'm very texture and visual and no, I cannot eat egg drop soup. Big Daddy did get some and I saw his and I knew I could not eat that. It had, uh, well, let's just not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it. Most people probably would. It's me. It's me, not them. Not the egg drop soup, not the cook. It's me. So, um, what else? Oh, so somebody was asking me about Zeke coming down. Does he still come down and do cleaning for me? He does sometimes, but I'm just be honest. I can't afford him all the time. I can't afford for him to come, you know, several times a week. Um, <laughs> and then um, when I wasn't able to put out YouTube videos, my YouTube income suffered significantly and went way down. And so I didn't have the income to pay him. So that's why he hadn't been coming down but, I mean, um, I pay him about 20 to $25, depending on what all he does when he comes down. And, you know, that adds up real quick. And then if he wants to come, like, two or three days that week, I'm just like, I, I can't, I can't, can't. <laughs> I can't do that, no. <laughs> but Angela always jokes and says, Did Zeke come take your trash out? And if he did, I'll say, yeah, he come took, took, gathered up all the trash and took it out. And then, you know, took our can out to the road. And then the next day, she'll say, you got to pay Zeke to 20 bucks to bring your trash can back up to the house. <laughs> so, sometimes he does come and get our trash and get it out. And then sometimes, you know, I just, we skip some weeks. Some weeks we just don't get the trash out because, um if we can't get it out there and um yeah it just don't work out for us sometimes Ugh. it's getting warm in here with Phoebe's heater on I'm gonna have to turn that heater off because it is pretty warm Phoebe's not gonna like that <laughs> Phoebe I gotta turn your heater off baby it's getting a little warmish. See, Sassy's like, oh, why are you getting up? <laughs> uh. 
Oh. Let's see where I was. Okay, so somebody asked when why did Dakota decide to become a vegetarian? I don't know. That's just something he decided when he was a baby. I mean, like seriously, when he was a baby, he would not eat meat. Um, you know, some kids love chicken nuggets from McDonald's or eating a hot dog weenie or whatever. Dakota, no. He did not ever do that. He would not eat. Sassy, no. See, now she wants to smell my hand. She, he he would not eat meat. He just would not. And then, um, oh, I need to join. See, I was going to go on around. Let me join that. Um, he just never did eat meat. He refused. And then as he got older, he would say things and post things on the internet about... <sighs> A little baby chick and say I'm a I'm a chicken not a nugget or so I don't know he used to post things and it would upset people um, <laughs> it would upset people that I'm a little vegetarian was expressing his feelings and I'm like okay he's a kid you're a grown adult <laughs> get over it he can express his feelings if he wants to so anyway um, he's just always been like that. He's never had meat. Like, his first hamburger, which actually was like a soy burger, when our Walmart finally started carrying some of those, um, he was like 16 years old when he had his first hamburger. And that was because Walmart started carrying those, um, hamburger patties that are really like, I don't know if they're soy patties or tofu patties or something so they look like a hamburger patty but they're not really meat when our walmart started carrying those is when he he was about 16 when he first had his first hamburger yeah so he's never had like chicken or hamburger meat or anything like that and trust me big daddy is a big meat eater he is a meat and potatoes man so wasn't wasn't from us not trying just dakota just refused and he wasn't gonna eat meat oh Let's see if i can get get back in my groove here but anyway, so he is a vegetarian. He always has been. And it's not anything that we encouraged or came up with. He actually went to a feeding clinic when he was about, probably about nine years old. He went through a five-week feeding clinic in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we went there to see Elijah's GI doctor, and I had talked to him on the phone and about my concerns about Dakota, and he said, you know, okay, we'll make an appointment, and we're going to see him also, and then he ended up doing the um, a very intense feeding clinic there, and he came out still eating, not eating meat. <laughs> So we're we're good with that, whatever. So there is a difference between vegan and vegetarian. He does eat, you know, dairy and eggs, um, and stuff like that. A vegan, which I said in yesterday's video, and Dakota had to tell me this because I didn't know. They don't eat eggs, milk any kind of dairy like butter or such or and he said no honey either and then he said they have no happiness in case you missed that yesterday <laughs> and so then i said so a vegetarian eats all that they just don't eat meat and they have no happiness and he just laughed <laughs> uh, anyway what i would give for a good steak or a hamburger 
Yeah. I could eat that up. Some Popeye's chicken. Oh, yes. What I would give for that. Oh, let's see. Where are we at? Um... Oh, so Diana, you asked about a crochet cake series. I had tried to start one time, and I did not finish that, and I'll tell you why. The day that video, the morning that video came out, at the time that it was came out and was playing, I was standing at my doctor's office, read at the check-in counter, checking in for my doctor's appointment, my phone was ringing, and it was in the bottom of my purse, where it always is. And so I was trying to dig in the bottom of my purse to find that phone. I couldn't find it. And the lady's asking me to verify all this information to make sure that's really me. <laughs> like anybody else would want to be me. And um, I finally got my phone, because they kept calling back and kept calling back. So I knew it had to be something. And, um, it was the phone call to say that my dad had passed away. And so, after that, um, I don't know. I just, I was just not in a, not, I just wasn't in the place to do that. So, I did not finish that series. But at this time, I am in a place where I could go back and do that. So, thank you for bringing it up. And I will visit that. I will revisit that. So, that's good that you brought it up. Thank you so much. Oh, let's see. Where are we at? Um, oh, Julie. KS Mom. Do you all know her? She has a crochet channel. Her name is Julie. She always watches my videos and comments, and I watch her videos. I just don't comment because, you know, it's hard. <laughs> but, um, Julie had asked me, have I ever watched The Prince, The Princess and the Frog? Because her and her daughter was watching it, and the lightning bug mentioned Shreveport. And so, she thought of me whenever the lightning bug said that. So, that's interesting, and I have never watched that. Um, I guess since my kids grew up, I just haven't watched Disney movies, you know, like I did when they were little. We would always go see Disney movies, and, you know, we were always going to the movies with other homeschool friends and such, so we did see all those kind of movies then, but no, not, not so much anymore. Maria, thank you for telling me about your husband and your uh, conversation. I was just laughing. Um, I tell him I'm stubborn. I'm hard-headed and stubborn. That's that's how I'm doing this, and that's what's getting me through this. I tell you what, I'm the type of person that tell me I can't do it, and I'm going to find a way to do it. You tell me, oh, you can't do that, or that's not going to work. I'm going to find a way to do it. Because I am hard-headed and stubborn like that, okay? <laughs> that is me all the way. Anytime Big Daddy has said, Oh, that's not going to work. I'm like, yes, it will. And I would do it just to prove that it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Several people have asked about or made comments about Big Daddy as Mailman Mike. And so Julie had asked, did I write what he was to say for him, or did he come up with that? He come up with he's come up with that all on his own. Matter of fact, I cannot look at him when he is doing that voiceover because I am just laughing. I have to look the other direction so he sees the back of my head and not my face when he is doing that. And I'm just as surprised as anybody else when it comes out because I don't know what he's gonna say. But he's looking at the picture on my phone, so he's just talking. Whatever relates to that picture or whatever, you know. So, he's enjoyed doing that. And like I said, he has, he's 
told me some other ideas that he has and wants to do and add in another character for Patina and just, yeah, we just gotta, we just gotta record videos, but today wasn't the day. We just, I think we were both lazy today. I think he stayed in there in the den, sitting on the love seat most of the day or all the day, really. It, it's been, it's been a long week. <laughs> For him, too. <laughs> and yesterday was a really long day. For both of us. And also, Julie's daughter said that Patina is a cheater. Because she went out with the... On Instagram, she follows me on Instagram. And she was saying Patina went out with the um, V from the BTS Korean boy band. And then, next thing she knew, she was um, with Elvis Presley. So... <laughs> She said Patina was a cheater. <laughs> that tickled me so much. Yeah, Patina, she's a wild one. To keep my eye on her. So, in talking about my hands and such, I did want to run something by you guys. Um, and I'm not, I'm not asking you guys to do this because I need it to be some local people. I need it to be local. So, but this is my idea, and I don't know where to reach out for this, because I do not know this person <laughs> that could that could help me. But, I can see where there is going to come a time where I'm going to need some fingers to do stuff. But I think that prosthetic hands is very, very expensive, and I just don't know what... Um, they would have to work with on me. Now, I can bend these fingers. I really can. So, I don't know if that's, you know, good. If that's, you know, would help be helpful for the, for it or everything. But anyway. So, I made a little short video of unwrapping my hand to show the stitches and we had already put that video out remember that was a clip that was in a larger video the first look at my um finger amputation so i just took that clip and made a little shorts video out of it and so i was thinking now I'm talking Northeast Louisiana. I'm not talking about Maryland or Chicago or, you know, somewhere else. Because financially, I, I live in Louisiana. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm not able to travel. <clears throat> for, you know, so I need this to be um, doable. So I was thinking, if there was people here in my hometown... North Louisiana, Northeast Louisiana, anywhere from across the top of Louisiana. If there was people who could share that and asking, do you know of someone who is wanting to work with robotic hands, pro prosthetic hands, 3D printing? You know, because you never know who is interested in doing something like that. But they just need the opportunity or the person or, you know, whatever. There may be a college class or program that might be trying to do something like that. Now, we have ULM here. In Ruston, they have, um, let, let's say, us going towards Freeport. So, we have ULM here. We have uh, Tech here and Grambling here. And then um, whatever's in Shreveport also. So across the top of Louisiana. But anyway, so I kind of mentioned that to Big Daddy. And he just kind of like, why? Anybody can make a prosthetic fingers. And I'm like, okay, but I can't. I don't know how. I don't have the means to. I don't have a printer. And he just kind of acted like um, that would be... <laughs> he didn't say, but I just... I felt like he just didn't think that was a good idea. Like, he just didn't think, like, why would you do that? Because I don't know these people who are wanting to do this kind of thing. I don't know who that magic person is going to be out there. <laughs> and so I'm thinking that's the way I would reach this person, is people sharing 
that little shorts video, which is not very long at all. It's one minute. It's a one minute video. And that would just give them a look at my hands. And then if they're interested in doing something like that, they could say, hey, I, I was um, wondering about doing that or, you know, whatever. Or somebody might already be working on something like that. I have no idea. I don't know. Is that a good idea to post something like that or not? Well, me, it wouldn't benefit me to post it because I don't, I don't have YouTube. I mean, not YouTube, Facebook. I don't have Facebook to put that out there because, um, only people I have on Facebook and I don't post on Facebook, so I don't know why they're even friends with me on there, but only people I have on Facebook is family very close friends or people who are like very special to me in a close group, you know, a small group. I looked on there. I only have 49 people that I'm friends with. At one time I had like, like way over 2000, maybe even 3000 friends. But, um, I just, one morning I woke up and I just deleted it. Okay. <laughs> I just deleted all that. So I only have 49 friends on there and I looked on there and um, five of those are dogs, <laughs> and six of them are deceased, so, yeah, so, I don't know, but I don't know, I don't know if I really should approach people and ask them to share that link, or what, I don't know, but if I'm ever going to have prosthetics, it's going to have to be someone who is doing that as a hobby most likely or interested in robotics or um it's gonna have to be somebody just doing that you know on their own time at home because i can't pay a big company to do robotic hand it would have to be something that's very simple and um you know not expensive And it may not even be a benefit. It may not even be a benefit. I don't know. But I'm thinking I would kind of like to just explore it to see if that changes my life some. Because I think there's going to come a time where I'm going to, you know, wish that I had some fingers to do stuff. I do every day. But. <laughs> so tell me your thoughts on that. And like I said, uh, it wouldn't benefit me for you guys to share that. Other than, you know, it might bring people to my channel. But, um, I was hoping that it would bring me to the right person who is interested in doing something like that. I don't know. Does that make sense? Am I just, like, dreaming? It's kind of the way Big Daddy acted, so I didn't know. Well, guys, it has been one hour and a little over so eight minutes. I still got coffee. And yes, somebody asked, does my coffee get cold? It does. I have a warmer. All I got to do is pull it out of the drawer and plug it up. <laughs> but sometimes I don't do that. Sometimes I do. It depends. If it's real cold in the house, I will sometimes. Um... But, it, like, I'm comfortable sitting here. Phoebe, you know, was cold, so she wanted the heater on. <clears throat> but, like, you know, like, even doing... Okay, everything I do is hard to do with my hands. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining, but I'm just telling you the facts. Everything I do is hard to do. And I have to figure out, like, ways to do things. And so, pretty much, I feel like... Any simple thing I do, I have to, like, work way harder at it than anybody else. But even to do my mouse, um, having to, you know, cl I, do my, I have a trackball, so, as you can see. So, I do this with that. This is the easiest mouse for me. And then to scroll or whatever, I have to take this thumb and mash that and then pull down because, um, and then sometimes, you know, like when I'm copying and pasting something, I'll 
copy and highlight it and then I have to do this button over here to save or copy or paste or whatever so I use this right here mainly mainly so I use sometimes my pinky does come in and help but this is what I'm using I'll either use my pinky or my thumb on this and my thumb on this and that so that's what I'm doing and it was very very uncoordinated at the beginning but my fingers are kind of working together now <laughs> like they all decided to come together and work on that but before when I after my surgery I couldn't use this hand of course and then this hand I only had that thumb I can scroll or I can click but I couldn't do both and so yeah let me just look and see if there's any comments since I was recording this that I could grab up real quick. And I appreciate you all being so sweet and just encouraging me and praying for me and, you know, being here to watch me learn to crochet with what I've got. I mean, I did say in the video that I was relearning to crochet and somebody said, well, you already know how to crochet, but I do. But I'm having to relearn with different set of fingers. So I am learning to crochet with new, new, in a new way. Um, anyway, so there weren't any, any new questions. But yeah, that, that's how I'm using my mouse. And so, um, before this pinky, I used my mouse over here and I worked fine with that. I don't know. Maybe I could eventually do that with this. Maybe. Maybe those would coordinate together. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But... Yeah, anything I do, like just getting my tea out of the refrigerator or carrying my tea, I drop it. I was, and then I get so frustrated because then it just creates a mess for me to clean up. Like, then I got to clean up the tea all over the floor. I got to clean up, you know, whatever it is I drop. If I go in there and get something, a bowl of um, whatever, I'm trying to, you know bring in here to eat I'll drop it oh, Phoebe's happy <laughs> Phoebe's like yes our cats do not eat food like they don't eat food we drop or anything like that they sometimes I've tried to give them things like Phoebe likes you know I'll give her one I'll throw one down in front of Sassy and she just looks at it and looks back at me and then she watches Phoebe when Phoebe runs over to get it because Phoebe's already ate hers I'll give Sassy hers first then Phoebe and Sassy's just looking at it, and she watches Phoebe eat hers, and then she watches Phoebe come eat, you know, hers. So, um, but Phoebe's always happy when I drop stuff, and she gets to go partake in it while I'm trying to clean it up. But anyway, so I, everything I do, I create a bigger mess and more work for myself, as if it's not hard enough already. <laughs> I get frustrated with myself. I mean, it's kind of hilarious. It's laughable afterwards, but not at the moment. <laughs> not at the moment when you're having to clean it up and you didn't want to clean up something at the time. <laughs> but yeah, it's just part of it. That's just part of, you know, what I got to do. Anyway, guys, I am going to let you all get going. I hope you have a blessed day and enjoy your day. And if you need rest, take it rest if you need to just work on your hobby work on your hobby um do something that you enjoy and something that makes you happy today bring a little joy to your life i need to go to the grocery store really really bad we are out of everything like when we went to the grocery store last time which is probably a couple weeks ago we only got things that we just absolutely had to have at the moment and, of course, those things are gone. And so we need to get to the grocery store some way, somehow. I don't know. <laughs> but the problem is, is when we get back home, 
we got to get those groceries in the house, up the steps and in the house. And so Big Daddy wants to just bring them to the doorstep and set them on the top doorstep and me get them and bring them in the house. It's hard for me to pick up, you know, milk, um, whatever, a bag of canned food, you know. It's, it's hard for me to pick up those things. It really is. And so... I'm straining and hurting my hands trying to pick up groceries that he's going back and forth to the car. His knees are bad. I can hear his bones grinding on each other and popping when he walks. So he's having to go back and forth to the car to get groceries. And I'm having to pick up the groceries and bring them in the house. And so uh, we could probably be like a, a comedic comedy, a comedy, you know, skit there. And we do not have, our Walmart does not deliver to our house. Walmart does not deliver to us. I think some, I think Super One might as a grocery store, but they are much more expensive, more expensive than Walmart. And then um, someone had told me, Ellen, had told me that Sam's would probably deliver to our house. They deliver to hers. But, um, Sam's doesn't have, like, the groceries we need. And we don't need things in bulk for just the two of us. And so I would still need to go to Walmart, even if I got some things from Sam's. I would still need to go to Walmart to get groceries because Sam's doesn't have everything that I need. And if they did have it, I don't need it in bulk. <laughs> that would just get way too expensive, buying that in bulk and having to go and buy what they didn't have at the grocery store. So there's no getting, you know, Walmart don't deliver to us. You, you know, when you sign up to do that membership thing, they, they, it tells you, you know, they don't deliver to our house. So, anyway, we got to figure that out today. We, we need some groceries. I need um, also to get a prescription. I have a couple of prescriptions at Target. CVS I need to go and pick up also. So, lots of things we need to do. Are we going to do them? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I guess it's not the end of the world if we don't, so we'll just play it by ear and do what we do as if we, what we can, do what we can. But I appreciate you all, and um, I will see you all in the next video. Love you guys. Remember, it's a beautiful day to crochet. Bye, friends.